from Dare to Be Creative, and I have a little project share that I'd like to share today. Um, my cousin had asked me um, the end of last year to make a mini album for her new granddaughter that was expected to be born at the end of the year, beginning of the year. And um, I was looking for paper, couldn't find any, and, you know, it was just struggling because, you know, the winter months, that's, you know, all you see is Christmas paper, New Year's, that kind of stuff. You don't see baby books, especially eight by eight. So, um, and her son, um, you know, like, like I said, they they just had their first baby, but um, the mom had already um, had a daughter before. So now my um, my cousin has a step granddaughter and a new, her first grandbaby. So I decided... I wanted to make her a scrapbook album, but also wanted to do one for her sister, you know, because um, she's our family too. So she's, oh gosh, I think she's seven, seven or eight. She just had a birthday. My bad. Anyway, um, so I made too many albums and I made them non-traditional. So it's not really a traditional baby book, even though um, one is going to be a baby book and one is going to be for big sister. But they're very similar, the same pages, the same papers, just cut out a different way and very simplistic. All you got to do is stick the picture down. I didn't even put journaling up there. Just very simple. Um, and I'm going to cut the mats for her to show she'll know exactly what size to trim the pictures to. And I was stuck when it came to finding papers during the winter holidays. All you see is Christmas and fall and those type of papers. You don't see any really baby papers don't start coming out to spring. Um, so anyway, I said, you know what? I'm always spending extra money and going into not debt, but, you know, just spending extra money and have tons of paper. So I said, you know, let me challenge myself to use what I already have and see what I can come up with. So that's what I did. Um, I also wanted to use my cinch. So I got to use my cinch for the first time. And I've shown in some previous haul videos a little plastic sleeves that I got um, that was made for the cinch, cinch um, the spiral. My cinch is a square, but they fit. You just have to know how to line it up. It took me a couple times practice, but I got it to work. And those pages for a 20-pack was only... $1.99 so um, I definitely want to use that so that's what made me use the 8x8 because um, I had 8x8 sheet protectors that were already hole punched for the cinch so um, what I did for the covers again I kept it very simple so she can put it on the shelf stack them up um, cause you know, when you're a new town mom, you have all these dreams you want to journal and keep all those weight and height and every little thing that they do, but you're also tired. Well, she's not a first time mom, but, um, but still, you know, you, you're tired, you need to sleep. <laughs> so she's busy and she's working too. So I wanted to be very simple and I don't, didn't know her style. So, um, but both of them have a sticker on the front and says, it's a girl thing. I just added a little bling. So I'm just ribbing on the sides, um, for both of them. And the little sticker just came from the dollar store. Nothing complex again. Chipboard covers. So they're both going to open up the same with the same. Um, this is like flocked paper. So this is you and me. And what you see is, I'm not going to show them at the same time. I'll show them separately, but I'll give you an idea of what I'm saying. On this one, this picture is vertical. On this one, the picture is horizontal. So I just switched the orientations on most of the book. So they're very similar, very simple, very plain. But I like it because sometimes you just need simple and plain. And other times you want something very, you know, complex and gaudy and, and, and chic and um, shabby chic and things like that. But if you know the person is going to be overwhelmed, sometimes shabby chic in, in um, different styles like that or steampunk can be too much for a non-scrapper or somebody who's not into arts and crafts. They don't, And then there's a lot of work involved and they may not appreciate it because they don't understand all the intricacies that's involved or how expensive it is to make an album. I mean, I went to like... Um, Maybe six rows of, um, two, four, six, eight rows of um, ATG gun, you know, and that's ten dollars a pack, you know. So that was forty bucks just on tape, you know. People don't realize how much it can cost to make these albums and how many hours involved. But I, I enjoy it. So anyway, this was just a border punch. It says you and me. It's a little bling again, and this is a little the dollar store those um, stickers and some flowers, and then uh, for recollections. Then, um, again, some more bling. And some of the papers are baby papers, and some of the other ones are just some cardstock that I had on staff. I mean, had on hand. This says Little Angel. Hole punched out some little stars. Again, I use a lot of different border punches. This one says Cute. And she has an um, animal print thing, pink and brown animal print. So that's why I put some of that in there, which I know is not traditional for a little baby, but I had to throw that in there because that's some of her print. Um, 
And this one says, a little ray of sunshine amongst the little clouds. Some more border punches. Again, like I said, this is really a non-traditional baby book, but it's simple. And I think all you have to do is slap the picture on it. I mean, you got the mat, slap the picture. You don't have to overthink it, and it's simple. Um, babies are such sweet beginnings. Babies touch the world with love. And I did it like in a similar line. I did it really quick. Um, so what I decided to do was when I did this album, this one says little one. This one says love. Again, I had to get some more of that pink animal print. Sweet and adorable. And then you and me. So what I did was I um, got all my pages, got all my coordinated pages together, stacked them up. And then I um, <clears throat> got out, you know, like 20 pages. I got out like 10 border punches. And then I got out like 10 stamps. And um, then I got coordinated embellishments, which were basically flowers. And I said, okay, I'm just using what I have right here. And that's what I'm going to do, like a similar line. Just cut and punch, cut and punch. And it was so much easier. I didn't do, you know, I, didn't, I had to overthink it, which made it kind of fun. I was proud of myself. It didn't take me but so long to do it. It's just been taking me forever to get the video done and to get it to her. Um, so, again, this is the same book. The pictures are in different orientation. And the other one, they were um, horizontal. So she can just give it to whichever child she wants to. Again, the same stamps. So I, I made it so that, you know, if I was a mom or a person who did not scrapbook, I would not feel overwhelmed. Because I made a book one time for somebody and I put a lot of embellishments in them and a lot of stuff. And they just looked at it and said, that scares me. You know, I, I can't I think about all that pretty stuff and it just makes me freak out, like, to put the wrong picture on it. So I'm just... Again, you know, just letting people know sometimes non-scrappers, they are afraid of the embellishments. <laughs> Not all, but some are. Some people are intimidated by cutting photos. I know I was one of those people, you know, to cut a photo this size, like a 3x3 three three or 3x4, three and it's not the size that it came printed out like a 4x6 or 3x5, I would freak out. I did not like to trim my pictures. It would stress me out. I don't know why. It's just crazy because I was thinking, if I cut my picture and I mess it up, you know, I'm not going to have that picture again. So I made it so, again, like I said, she didn't have to overthink it, didn't have to feel stressed out. Just, you know, again, she just got to print the pictures out. So I do encourage people to do that. You know, um, when I used to do creative memories, I used to be a consultant. We used to have this t shirt that says, um, Don't let your babies be JPEGs. And that is so true because everybody's pictures on the phone, on the computer, but they break. Okay. I, I took photography classes and. Um, I had tons of photos. I had them on my computer. I had them backed up in storage on external hard drive. And one day my external hard drive crashed. I mean, just out the random blue, it just crashed. And then my computer crashed. So like within the next day and I lost everything like five or six years worth of photos. And that was like still devastating because like the birth of my grandson, all the photos just totally gone and can't ever get those back because both of them died within a matter of like two days. So, um, you have to have your photos printed out. Thank God I had some things printed out and some things that I already um, uploaded to like Snapfish and Shutterfly and all that kind of stuff. But the majority of photos were totally lost. Um, can never get back again. So for anybody out there who keeps saying, I'm going to print my pictures. When you get one of those coupon codes to get some free photos or, or 10 cent a pay, print them out, print them out, print them out. Even though it may take you a minute to organize your photo, just you know, I just upload like a thousand at a time and then I just go boom, get them printed. Because if anything happens, at least I got a hard copy. And then um, if you hate cutting the picture up, you can always scan it, you know, onto your computer, onto a disc. So you have another backup and then cut the, the uh, one you have printed out. But anyway, so I just want to encourage people to do that because you just never know. Um, you may drop your cell phone in the water or something and you can't get your photos. So think about that. And oh, one other, one other sidebar with that. Um, I'm into infant mental health. And one of the things that uh, I went to this wonderful study a couple years ago, and they did research to find out that people that have photos around the house, especially of the children and the family doing different things, are seven times more resilient to mental illness. And um, I shared this years ago when I was, um, maybe like three years ago when I was um, doing Creative Memories at one of our scraps. And uh, one of the moms was saying to me, you know, she said, 
Um, I went through a horrible divorce and I thought I was such a bad parent because I was working two jobs and I was snapping at my kids and, you know, we had pictures all over the house and she thought I was thinking that was the worst time in my life with my kids because I felt so bitter and I thought everything, you know, put so much responsibility on them. And she said she was talking to her, her grown kids and they were like, no, mom, that was the best time because we got to depend on each other. We got to stand together as a family, you know, help each other out because they knew their parents were going through a divorce. So the siblings ended up becoming tighter, um, closer, and um, became more responsible because they had to help out because mom was working two jobs. But mom felt guilty because she was working two jobs and was snapping at the kids and those type of things. And she said, but one of the things that she did do was she always had pictures around the house and um, of the kids. And I said, well, think about it. When you smile, I mean, excuse me, when we have a picture, most of the time you're smiling. And so you think about a kid growing up in a home, and even though you may be going through adversity, it could be a death of a parent or a divorce or deployment, um, unemployment, you know, just any kind of stressful things, you know, marital relations or whatever, single parent. When parents, I mean, excuse me, when children see themselves smiling in the photo and there's adversity going in the home, somehow that, that will to live, that fight, that, that, the essence of that person to say, I can overcome, I can get through this. Um, that hope is there. So they're saying that photos seems to be a way of making people more resilient to stress. So I say that as a sidebar because I know a lot of people I see their videos are suffering from different type of debilitating um, medical issues, um, family stresses, a lot of single parents, a lot of kids with autism, um, I, fibromyalgia. I hear a lot of people saying this stuff on the YouTube videos, the things that they're going through, um, taking care of parents and things like that. But having photos actually reduces stress. Because you think about better times when you see those photos and you tend to smile when you see a photo and it brings back a good memory of something funny that happened that day. Because most of the times when you snap a funny or snap a photo is a funny moment or it's a cherishable moment. And so, um, you know, I just encourage you to think about it. Print some of those photos out. You know, it doesn't have to think it has, doesn't have to be some company. Just it could be a 25 cent photo that you printed out, even if you print out on your own printer or at Walmart somewhere, Walgreens. Just print out some photos, stick them on the fridge. I mean, it doesn't have to be, like I said, um, professional photos, just candid photos of the kids around the house doing things and making you smile, making them smiles, doing something silly, you know, popping bubbles, anything. But those kind of things really make you resilient and stronger and um, know that you can get through that adversity. So just my little word of advice and wisdom and encouragement. So anyway, um, don't mind me. I'm just rambling. So anyway, um, Take it for what it's worth. Um, God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.